What does it take to make a modern videotape recorder? Well, it's a question of taking the proper components and putting them together in the best possible configuration. First, the heart of the machine. The facility for precise and efficient handling of tape. The tape deck, or top plate. This is where the tape actually comes into contact with the head during recording or playback. Next, we add a signal system. This is the electronic circuitry necessary to process the video signal into a form suitable for recording or in playback into a form suitable for reproduction. It consists of the modulator demodulator, the switcher, processing amplifier, and record drivers and amplifiers. Because of the need for precise regulation and synchronization of various tape speed factors, a very sophisticated servo system is necessary to control the head drum and capstan. The servo system also includes the motor power amplifiers. Third, an operating control system for the entire recorder is necessary. Ideally, this should be localized in one convenient area of the recorder and should contain controls for moving tape and selecting the functions of the recorder. And finally, monitoring facilities for both audio and video. Now, all you have to do is enclose all these components in the most compact possible package. And you have the new Ampex VR1100. That's all it takes? That's all it takes to make a VTR which will record and play back high quality monochrome television pictures that meet both the technical and quality standards of broadcast television. You make it sound easy. Well, I didn't mean to because it really isn't easy. As a matter of fact, it took Ampex almost 20 years of being a leader in the business of designing and building magnetic tape recorders, plus all we've learned from the more than 1,500 videotape recorders we have working all the way around the world. Another thing, our customers know more about videotape recorders now than they did in 1956, so now we have to build them according to their specifications. You mean the customer tells you how to build a machine? Well, no. But over the years, the customers have told us exactly what they want on a videotape recorder. They said they want a machine that is smaller, lighter, simpler, easier to operate and maintain, less costly to buy. Now that left it up to us to figure out exactly how to build it. And the result is the VR1100, designed to meet the customer's specified needs exactly. Let's take a little closer look at this VR1100. I think you'll see what I mean. For example, uh, let's look again at the top plate. Nothing new about that, is there? Uh, no, there really isn't. Aside from small modifications to allow for the addition of new accessories, this top plate is identical to the top plate on the original VR1000A and every broadcast videotape recorder which followed it. Well, how come you didn't improve it for the new machine? Oh, we didn't have to. Of course, no design is perfect, but this one comes close. In fact, the near perfection of this top plate is in large measure responsible for the amazing performance and reliability of Ampex videotape recorders. In design, it's heavily ribbed to provide absolute rigidity. In manufacture, it's precision machine from both sides to ensure absolute flatness. Because we can guarantee this flatness and rigidity time after time, we can also guarantee perfect recorder performance from the standpoint of tape handling and head alignment. The top plate that goes into the VR1100 is exactly the same as the top plate which goes into the ultra-precise VR1006 radar recorder at more than $100,000. You can't ask for much more than that. You can't get any more than that. Now let's take a look at the signal system in the VR1100. Like all components in the VR1100, it's completely transistorized. Let's examine one of the circuit boards closely. The body of this board is of epoxy fiberglass. It fully meets official military specifications and represents the most modern practice for advanced electronic design. This type of board is used throughout the VR1100 because it's a proven, better way of doing it. In addition, wherever possible, these circuit boards are interchangeable, a great advantage when checking and troubleshooting. Compare this simple, clean board, which is recognized by the majority of electronic designers as the better way to do it, with the other approaches available. The old-fashioned vacuum tube or the hand-wired technique with its high failure potential and built-in difficulties in the area of solder joints and lead dress. What if something goes wrong? Suppose uh, an individual component fails on one of the boards. Can it be repaired? 
Well, the answer is yes. But actually, the circuitry and the components are both derated in such a way that failure is very rare. You see, instead of being loaded to or near their limit, they're working at only partial capacity. That means a long and trouble-free life. But if a failure should occur, the individual components are very easily replaced. In addition to that, with the use of this extender board, the circuit board can be out where it's easy to reach and test while working under regular operating conditions. This, again, adds to the ease of maintenance of the VR1100. Now let's go on to the signal system. This is the modulator. Well, there's nothing new there, is there? Isn't it a multi-vibrator type like the ones you used in the VR1000A? Oh, there's a lot that's new here. It's true that the modulator in the VR1000A was a multi-vibrator type, but this modulator is a wholly new design, all solid state, of course, and a vast improvement over the original. Now, how did you happen to choose the multi-vibrator method for the VR1100? Well, it's a better way of doing it. As a matter of fact, the multivibrator modulator is just about the perfect answer to the job we had to do in the VR1100. It's simple, it's defendable, rarely needs attention, and in some ways it's actually better than other systems. For example, this modulator will accept 100% multiburst. That means that in a picture with a high contrast ratio, there'll be no streaking or breaking up in the brightest highlights of the picture. And then, too, it contributes to the economy of the machine, which is exactly what the customer asked for. Now, how about the switcher in the VR1100? That's this uh, group of three boards right here. And here again, we went the same route, looking for a better way of doing it from a standpoint of economy, simplicity, and dependability. And our choice was a two-by-one switcher of very ingenious design. Is this as good as a four-by-two switcher? Well, in some very important ways, it's better. For example, the stability of this switcher is so outstanding that the adjustment of switcher phasing can just about be forgotten, rather than being necessary every day or for every playback, as it has been on past machines and on some machines presently on the market. Although the switcher is two by one, each of the four heads has a separate preamplifier, allowing peak individual performance. As a result, signal to noise ratio is 40 dB or better on interchange tapes. So good that no subjective difference can be seen between VR1100 tapes and those produced by more expensive recorders. In the record mode, of course, provision is made for accurate optimization of each head. Did you find a better way to 